Good afternoon, everybody. Phil Simons and Justin Beach here with you with your Friday afternoon weekly grain market recap. Well, with winter wheat harvest really starting to wrap up, I thought it was a good idea to get to grab Justin and kind of get a rundown in terms of what we saw for winter wheat harvest and what, what do we expect uh, going forward. So, Justin, how did everything go this year? So yeah, far? so thanks for having me on here, Phil. Um, so I want to kind of start by discussing, you know, crops and what we saw here going west to east throughout the PW draw territory, and then I'll kind of go into its effect on markets. Um, and so, you know, initially uh, in Idaho and Washington, we saw below average yields and above average protein. And as we move into Montana, we we did see a pretty reasonable crop. I'd call it uh, a big crop, uh, but, but nothing huge mm -hmm. with widely variable protein. Uh, we've got pockets of 10 fives, pockets of 12s, and, and even pockets of 13s. And you've kind of seen that reflected in in protein scales. Um, and so, you know, the function of, of this market was to find demand. We we came out of a period of really poor export demand and we, you know, ultimately reduced basis levels to, to levels that get different destinations to kind of tug on this Montana crop. Uh, and so we've seen that materialize in wheat going A to the P&W, uh, B to California, C to the domestic market over Chicago, and uh, potentially, you know, we could move some of this wheat down to Mexico. So I think as we move forward, we've seen kind of a floor put in basis. Uh, I think you'll see, you know, with three to four different destination markets pulling on this crop, a, you know, wider than... Uh, than normal range of basis volatility. Um, but again, I think, uh, you know, the skies are looking bright. And so we, you know, we're feeling hopeful as we move forward and hopefully reduced futures levels can find us demand and and kind of take us, take us higher ultimately. Yeah. And so now we'll kind of move into futures and, and what we're looking at. We've, we've seen that volatility kind of come to a halt lately. Yeah. Uh, and I think what we're seeing at this point is pretty good resistance around that, you know, 550 SEP level, 560 DEES level. And it feels like we're a bird on the wire, so to say. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, going forward for this thing to, to move higher, what we're going to need to see is, is likely big purchases out of India, uh, potentially, you know, Russian origin wheat and, you know, whether it's four or five uh, million metric tons or you know, eight, nine, that's going to have a big effect on, yep. on the market. Um, and so we, we have seen those values in India rise drastically. And so I think that's pretty indicative of a, of a short crop. Okay. Um, but with that being said, uh, we're still the world's residual supplier with Russian, uh, German, Baltic wheats, all pl priced well below our current levels. Um, so you, again, as, as we move forward, I think we probably continue to take the elevator down and the, uh, the stairs up to go find that demand and then, and then run away because domestically we are just yeah. not looking at a surplus here. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Justin, that was a fantastic rundown. I really do appreciate it. You know, in terms of the volatility that we have seen, you know, those knee-jerk reactions, they have been kind of muted, you know, recently yep. with the headlines and everything else that have been that have been coming out. So I really do appreciate the rundown. Uh, other than that, guys, we're really going to just go ahead and wrap everything up. I hope everybody has a great weekend. And remember, the best way to make a small fortune is to start with a big one. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk with you next week. Thanks, all.